So welcome back to Stop Fainting Snippets. And today we're going to talk about vasovagal syncope, obviously a term that we talk about all the time in our clinic. Boone, in one line, can you give us the definition of vasovagal syncope? So vasovagal syncope is when somebody loses consciousness as a result of poor blood flow to the brain, which is typically due to either a low blood pressure or a low heart rate. So a slow heart rate and a low blood pressure. And typically this is very uh, short and brief and with rapid recovery of consciousness afterwards. Okay, that's very clear. Trish, what might patients feel when they have an episode of vasovagal syncope? It can vary, um, but most people get a wooden um, and that might be feeling weak, um, somebody's disconnected the power to you, um, feeling lightheaded, feeling nauseous, Feeling a bit antsy, but something's not right, and you don't quite know what it is. It could be mild antsiness, or it could be major panic. Um, feeling something in the chest, where you feel a bit breathless, or just a bit uncomfortable in the chest, or you might be aware of a heart rate change, um, lightheadedness. And then typically, I, I find it's quite late signs of when your vision gets affected, and then your hearing is usually the last thing to go that people say they might get muffled hearing or a ring in their ears. Um, as usually quite late late signs, but it varies. For some people might get very specific things which are unique to them, um, or some of those or in different different patterns, but those tend to be the typical warning symptoms that people get. And feeling hot as well. So. Feeling hot, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Boone, in what circumstances might somebody have an episode of these of So uh, typically somebody who is quite dehydrated, not rested, uh, perhaps standing for a long time, and uh, in an environment which is hot, crowded, stuffy. So the typical vasovagal syncope environment we see, and we see a lot of patients, is in the underground tube in the middle of summer on the daily commute. So if you've been standing, not been able to get a seat, and it's been a long ride, crushed in, uh, and you're feeling hot and bothered, that is one kind of typical scenario in which it might occur. We've seen this obviously recently with um, uh, prolonged standing, uh, for example, in the Queen's funeral with, with one of her, uh, her royal guards um, who had basal syncope uh, because they were standing for a long period wearing uh, quite heavy uh, clothes uh, which were quite warm and when you're stationary for a long time, which could also be, a, for example, a supermarket queue or a bank queue or a bus stop or an underground carriage, these are the situations that can provoke basal syncope to occur. And also you have the, the, the stress of the X factor um, of the environment that they were in. So it's a very difficult, you know, all eyes on them. Um, sure. You know, and sometimes the more you, more you think that you, that you don't want anything to happen, sometimes the more, the more. So it's, it's a, that actual stressful element to that. Emotional stress. So yes. obviously the, the traditional Victorian term for fainting was the swooning that women would do when the man walked in. So this all sounds really unpleasant, um, Trish. Uh, and often when we see people faint in the hospital, they can end up having resuscitation because people can look dead, mm -hmm. and obviously they're not dead. Is this a serious condition? Is it a sin does it suggest something sinister? Well, uh, what we say is that if somebody's had has lost consciousness for the first time, it's always important to get that checked out because you can lose consciousness for different reasons. Once you identify that it's a vasal vagal or a faint. Then what I say to my patients is, you could all faint in nice padded soft rooms. Nobody would have any interest or concern, and you wouldn't be here asking about it. Because in itself, in terms of what's physiologically happening to the body, there's nothing to worry about. It's a more dangerous thing. Um, obviously, people have concerns if you were out and about and you didn't take action or couldn't sit down and you fell and hurt yourself. That is always a concern. And also, if it happens frequently and you're not sure what happens and it's quite worrisome, we certainly take it seriously because we understand how that can make people feel and how it can make family members or partners worry. So we don't, we never discount that, we always recognise that. But physiologically what's happening is nothing you shouldn't worry about. And we know that is it up to 50% of people will have an episode in their lives at some point. So mm -hmm. if you're having it, you're not alone. Thank you both. You're welcome.